What up YouTube? Topaz Ace back for another review. And this one's to that Dreamsville, the revenge documentary, man. And I'm giving this one the green light because this was fire. In fact, even though the music that may result from this individual project may not be up to par for multiple reasons that can be seen throughout this documentary you did. But this actual event that J. Cole crafted here is something that's next level, not just for uh, North Carolina hip hop who struggles to put out artists and such as right now we got the baby which is the biggest artist that Charlotte ever gotten and stuff and then J. Cole is clearly the biggest act to come out of North Carolina as far as hip hop is concerned but this is ultimately a great thing for hip hop in general as this is getting back to somewhat of the roots of what hip hop is all about because when you see how individuals create songs and things of that nature to this day. They'll record this stuff and send it over the internet to somebody to get a feature on, then send it back and therefore you got the cost effective way to go ahead and create music. But yet, this goes back to the whole, we're going to have everybody in the studio, we're going to interact, we're going to feel each other's energy. That was specifically generated in the moment, you did, and that leads to a lot of great potential to be had. See, this is why individuals like Rick Ross and Lil Wayne can get away with being a feature on an individual song and then never talking about the specific topic. And that's because these individuals are getting songs sent to them via the internet and recording and just going on with their business because they're not emotionally vested in these songs or anything of that nature. But yet, when you have the person there and they have to write to the song on the point and people are telling them what they need to do to be a part of the song, then therefore you'll create something that's a lot more fluid that's going to work better as a full song. But as you look at this whole session, you ultimately got to realize this is an event first. Then it was second, them doing music to put together this album, you did, And this event was organized by J. Cole as he came up with the whole idea a long time ago, but yet it finally clicked for him when he developed his relationship with a music studio that had multiple rooms, but yet they also showed him love to the degree of we won't even charge you to be up in here. And with that relationship and then the idea put on top of it, all that there was necessary to do was to promote it as the idea of promoting it came from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where they offered out invitations to local acts that's within the area to come on through and everybody was like, I got my golden ticket. This is what I've been waiting for all my life so that I can just come through, showcase, and get these individuals to hop up on my stuff. And to be real with you, if you got a invitation to something like this, it literally is the golden ticket because if any of these songs get selected for not only this Revenge of the Dreamers project, but any other project that's happening around it, the residuals and the money that you're getting paid for the beats and all of that stuff definitely does come into play. And you can ultimately make a bunch of money just by being in the area in which everybody is being creative for projects that will ultimately come out. And to keep it 100, sending out invitations like that was a magnificent touch on top of it, man as he did it last minute as well. And people really rallied around it. A lot of people were super hype and wanting to get involved to get into the place. And then it went viral on the internet and a lot of people wanted to know what was happening to the degree that you got big known acts that's just pulling up like, all right, what's going on over here? And T.I., Rick Ross, Ludacris, Vince Staples. And when these people are there and they are dropping verses and getting on other people's stuff as well, man, then you see that it ultimately did become its own thing. It became its own entity. And as I said in the beginning, I believe this event or how he put it together is going to be much bigger than what the actual compilation album is ultimately going to end up being. Just like how he did the Dreamsville Festival here in North Carolina as well well it's like this is like a great thing because North Carolina doesn't get the love especially in the commercial industry and all that but a guy like J. Cole who's coming back home to do these magnificent things for his particular areas even though it's not mine because I'm Charlotte and Fayetteville and Raleigh and all of that stuff is 
like an hour and some change away. I still got nothing but love and admiration for these things that he's putting together. He is ultimately changing the way that the game is played by doing things like this. And if it's successful, we of course are going to see multiple more people to do the same exact thing. But herein lies the difficulties that goes along with doing such an event, you dig? Because J. Cole, of course, is going to be expected to be on a bunch of these songs, right? But yet, by him being the promoter of the event, you could see that he's not really going to be on all that much because it was absolutely necessary that he had to like go and talk to individuals, tell them what they needed to do, where they needed to be. He also had to account for the fact that a bunch of these independent artists that he's bringing in to be a part of this project are going to want photos, are going to want to actually chill with him and speak with him even though he's organizing things at that moment, you dig? Like, there was a whole lot of time consuming things that he himself had to actually delegate in order for this to become better but yet because there was a lack of organization then it became more of a feeding frenzy for anybody who was there because when you look at the logistics of it you only got three actual music studios that you could record in a bunch of other like waiting rooms and i guess there were other rooms where people were just making beats or something on their laptops of that nature but yet Ultimately, you had to get into one of these three rooms in order to record anything. They invited way more artists than what is need to be in order to record in any one of these studios. So at one given time, you might have six to ten individuals in the same studio at one time all trying to write something. So therefore, unless they're going to do multiple ten feature projects, man, which I hope they don't do because that song sucked because it had so many people on there, you did? There ultimately needed to be somebody who's the overseer, like, okay, there's six people that's writing to this particular beat. You three are going to have to be the ones to take this particular song. The rest of you are going to have to record a voice, potentially get scrapped, or just move on to another studio because I like the way that these individuals are doing on this particular beat. Like, somebody had to oversee it. But yet, it couldn't be the producers because the producers were making beats at the same time, you dig? There had to be an executive producer right there in the building in every single studio to dictate exactly where it goes in order to maximize the potential out of all of the songs. But there wasn't that. So, therefore, it was everybody do what you need to do to get on the track. And that's why it became super competitive, which that can help. As they said, certain individuals had to come up out their shell and be like, look, nah, bro, this is my joint. I'm on this. There's nothing y'all can do about it. Like, you can't just be passive walking around like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Let me try to find the right place for me to get in where I fit in. That's not going to happen. You got to dominate and become the alpha recorder in every room if you're going to do that. But yet, just because you're an outgoing individual like the producer who said that he was running beats in multiple rooms and all of that stuff does not necessarily mean that that's the best person to do it because J. Cole shot down his beats pretty instantly. So the lacking of organization was a double-edged blade. Now I'm going to have to hear the whole project when it does come out to determine which way it actually went, whether it was for the positive or for the negative. So far, just based off the singles, I would say it's more geared towards the negative. But it was days into the entire session that J. Cole was actually able to sit down and start creating. And that's why I'm like, he's clearly not going to be on the vast majority of these projects, man. Because he had to step into the executive producer role overseeing everything instead of actually composing. Now, what was dope, though, is how individuals decided to play the positions. There were certain individuals that would bounce from room to room to room just to hear what was going on, just to see who was cooking up what on top of what individual production in order for them to get inspired. Now, whether they tried to hop on that song in particular, that was up in the air. Some 
just got inspiration by seeing these other individuals doing what they need to do that they would jump into another room and instantly start hopping on it because they realize, okay, these other dudes is good. I need to step up my game and this track over here was fired. I want to make something of that nature. The competitive aspect or wanting to hop on it aspect. Like, that was pretty dope. And anybody who's watched Hustle and Flow, you realize this to be true. Like, anybody that just want to come in and flow and rap and all of that stuff, man, that never ends. So, therefore, how do you stop this kind of effort, you dig? Like, usually it's when the money runs out or when the project is completed. That's when this whole kind of ordeal would be finished. But yet, clearly we've seen that money is not an issue because the, the studio owners were all behind what J. Cole wanted to do. They wasn't really taxing like that. So they was just letting it rock. And I'm sure they crafted so many songs that it can go for multiple albums on top of albums, individuals doing their own things as well. Like, there's no individual point where you could say, okay, we should stop right now until somebody like J. Cole had to come in and just say, you know what, let's just end it now on a high note because everybody is feeling the energy, everybody wants to continue going, and that's how you stop it. Like, you want people to come back for the next time. Just like when it comes to promoting and doing an album. You don't want to give people a hundred songs, even if you have 100 songs. You want them to want more from you or else you're going to play yourself out. So they waited till they felt as though they got a good amount of tracks and everybody was still energetic about it and decided, okay, we're done. Overall, man, just these types of actions that J. Cole has done showcases why he's a legend in the game as we see him right now. Even as musically, a lot of his stuff, especially recently, his last bunch of albums and all that have been super dry, haven't been all that either, you did. But yet these moves that he's been tactically making from the Dreamsville Festival to this right here, the Revenge of the Dreamers 3 whole session and things of that nature, man, it shows you that he's thinking of things on a whole nother level. I love the documentary. I'm hoping that the music will ultimately match the whole energy of everything that went on with this. But looking at the first four singles, don't think it's going to happen. But it's cool. Because eventually, if people pick up on this and consistently try to do this kind of promotion you did, then I believe somebody is going to craft a classic project out of it because this is just really too dope. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there and you can go to DownloadPads.com that's down there to read today's article.